Mark the 11th chapter, 1 through 10. Mark 11, 1 through 10. And it reads, And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied whereon man never sat. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, why do ye do this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him. And straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way and found the colt tied by the door without in a place where two ways met and they loosed him. And certain of them that stood there said unto them, what do ye loosing the colt? And they said unto them, even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon him. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off the trees and strawed them in the way. And they that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, thank you for this day that we call Palm Sunday. Thank you that Jesus is our king. He's our Messiah. He's our mediator between God and man. He's been this perfect sacrifice and thank you that he now sits at the right hand of the throne of God ever making intercession for us. Now I ask in the name of Jesus that the words of my mouth meditates in my heart are acceptable in your sight. Give us ears to hear, hearts to receive what the spirit of the Lord will say to us today. In Jesus name. Amen. I want to speak from the, you may be seated. I want to speak today from the subject on this Palm Sunday. The Lord has need of it. The Lord has need of it. The reason why I, I was hesitant saying which of these scriptures shall I read because, um, you know, when they make movies, many times they have various shots. Okay. Even here now, uh, as we are recording, both for what you see on the screens, but also what will be seen on television and what is going across on streaming, all the cameras usually are on me, one angle or another. Some are closer, some are wider, some on my right side, and if this one's over here on here on the left side. And each of them give a different angle. And so, uh, depending on what angle that you're looking at me from, you can describe what I have on. So, one, some people may see one thing, some people may see another. Somebody sitting from in the back will say, well, he, well, he had a, looked like he had a bulge in, in, his, in his back there because they're seeing that my, my mic pack is sticking out. You're not necessarily seeing that in the front. So different perspectives, different angles give you different views. And so what I often do when I look at the gospel accounts, I will go and look at the other gospels. And so when you look at the other gospels, all Three, I believe, of the synoptic gospels. Synoptic gospels are known as the, the ones that, for the most part, just give you different angles of the same story. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, synoptic gospels. And then John was considered a little bit different because John gives us whole, his, his whole perspective was somewhat more spiritual, more symbolic. He connected Jesus more to the heavenly father than to his earthly ministry. Uh, John is also the one who writes things like, I'm the one that Jesus loved. John was quite a bit younger than even the other gospel writers. But the thing about Matthew's gospel, which is very unique in this account of the story of what we know as Palm Sunday, and Jesus coming into Jerusalem, when you, and the others don't mention it, 
And most writers, when you go look at commentary, I look high and low. I finally found somebody who dared to attack it to give an explanation. But when you look at Matthew's gospel, Matthew 21, 1 through 3, it says, and when they drew, and this, this ain't really important, but it's just on my mind. <laughs> Matthew 21, 1 through 3, when they drew nigh to Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage, uh, unto the Mount of Olives, they sent Jesus to disciple. Then sent Jesus to disciples, saying, "Go into the village against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them. See, some of y'all didn't catch it yet. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man ask, you ask, say unto you, you shall say, the Lord hath need of." them and straightway he will send them so Matthew talks about a colt and an ass a donkey and a smaller donkey all the others mention one when we those of us grew up in church and went to Sunday school and used to get a little pictures a little card with the picture how many of y'all remember that some of us been in church a little bit okay you okay. always saw Jesus coming in on the donkey or an ass Okay, but Matthew mentions two, a cult and an ass, and he said Jesus sent them. He said, "Loose them, loose both of them, and bring them to me." And in my uh, and and then Luke nineteen, he gives the same story, Luke nineteen twenty eight through thirty eight about the one. He sent two of his disciples. Verse thirty one: If any ask you why you loose them, tell them the Lord hath need of him. Verse 33, and as they were loosing the colt, the owners thereof said, why loose ye the colt? And they said, the Lord have need of him. Then we go see how Jesus is riding in. But there is, this was actually prophetic fulfillment of scripture. Prophetic fulfillment of scripture. The primary prophetic scripture was Zechariah the ninth chapter and verse 9. Zechariah 9 and verse 9. And it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon the colt, the fowl of an ass. So Matthew records that Jesus rode in on a colt and an ass. Now, now when you study this, you don't, they, they say, you know, some say, well, he maybe rode on one for a little while, one rode, rode, rode on the other, and then somebody, we don't know, somebody say he was riding on the, you know, with his sitting on the, on the, uh, on the donkey and then having his feet on the colt because they would have been together and right. I don't know, but the fact is, well, the, only, the, the only thing that, that, that why I think this makes it more interesting is that Jesus sends his disciples to go get somebody's colt and ass. To go get somebody's two animals. He sends them, and the word is, he instructs them to go get it. And he said, and if anybody asks you, just tell them the Lord needs it. And it was something empowering about whoever, who, where Jesus very specifically sent them, it was apparently somebody who had a relationship with the Lord. Knew the Lord, otherwise being Lord who? What Lord? I don't care, you better get your Lord self out, out of here. Okay, but oh, he said, oh, okay, and allow them to bring them to Jesus. Jesus gives instructions. Jesus gives instructions. The disciples had to respond to Jesus' instructions. Lately, I've been thinking a lot. I don't know why, because I guess I really, I, uh, you know, especially as we're coming out of pandemic, I realize how important it is to have help. Even as we go to do things and, and also for us to get back to the level of ministry we want to do, I realize how important it is to have help because I don't care what God called you to do, you got to have help. I was meditating this week, kept thinking about Jesus, Jesus feeding the 5,000. 
and, and all the gospel, by the way, so not, they all call, recall that. And when Jesus said, listen, let's, sit, let's not send the people around starving. They've been with me all day. Let's give them something to eat. And all of the disciples in each of the accounts, they all say, well, where are we going to buy this much food? That tells me they had money. They say, where are we going to buy? They say, we, they, <laughs> Sam, Sam Walton has not been created yet. We don't have Walmart, we don't have Costco out here in these wildernesses like this. It's hard out here in this wilderness. Where are we, we going to buy? And Jesus tells his disciples, even that God, he said, tell the people to sit, sit down and divide them by 50s and 100. 12 men, at least 5,000 men, not counting women and children. And these people got to follow Jesus' instruction and organize these people. Now, we know everybody wasn't as, as assertive as Peter. I can see Peter. Sit down. Get over there. Everybody's not assertive as Peter. So I'm like, can, can you, can, one, can y'all count off to 50 and y'all put in one group? In the, and Jesus, they had to all, and they just had to respond to everything Jesus told them. You know, we think of these people as great apostles, but they were servants. They were event planners. They passed out flyers. They just went door to door saying, we're going to have this meeting here tonight, and can, can y'all come? They weren't on the stage. Nobody was listening to them. And when Jesus finally sent them out, the people said, listen, when you, you can't even do the work. Leave my boy alone. Let, let me bring it to the real man to cast the demon out. And so there was a lot of instruction. These had a, they, they were designed to help Jesus do ministry. You need to understand that. They, were, they, weren't, they weren't, right now, they weren't apostles operating over the church. They are just, Jesus assisted helping him do ministry. The Bible said he called 12 that they should be with him and he might send them out to preach. I can't send you out to preach until you've first been with me. To realize what ministry is really about, which is serving people. Doing little insignificant things that nobody sees you. And what does this have to do with ministry? And I'm called to preach to the nations. I don't have no time to be telling people to just sit down. That's the usher's job. I'm called for ministry. Not crowd control. Jesus gives instruction. Just go loose a donkey. And, you know, and this he tried to say, I, I, I try to get, you know, and um, there's a lot of, you know, you know, I try to stick to the words. A lot of good preaching and a lot of times, a lot of good preaching make people yell and scream, but ain't necessarily the words. It just sounds good stuff. So I got ready to work this cult and donkey and stuff. I said, the cult, that's like a thoroughbred. And the donkey is the it's for the lowly. So he wants Jesus to let me know I, I come for the kings and for the paupers. Then I could have worked real good. But that ain't what the scripture says. And all the teaching, all his research, the cult simply meant a younger donkey. Okay? So it, it could have been more prestigious to go get a cult. Just go get a donkey. Un tie him and bring him to the disciples first had to respond to instruction. The owner of the donkey, the cult, had to cooperate with the request. Sometimes people don't realize what it takes to do ministry. A whole lot of people got to say yes. The owner of the donkey had to cooperate with the request. He could have said, listen, I know I told Jesus I would be at the, I, I didn't know he was going to come today. I got some, I, me and the donkey and the cult, we got some stuff to do. No, I changed my mind, or no, I don't, when are you gonna bring it back? Or I need money today, how much are you gonna give me? The owner of the donkey had to cooperate with, with request. Thirdly, the donkey and the cult, which are known to be stubborn, had to cooperate and go with the disciples. It takes a lot to make ministry happen. And God has need of us. 
He has need of our finances to make ministry happen. And whenever God wants to do something in the earth, he does it through somebody in the earth. Let me say that again. Whenever God wants to do something in the earth, he does it through somebody in the earth who willingly cooperates with his plan. Everybody say, Lord, make me willing, make me willing. That is recorded over and over and over and over in scripture. God wanted certain things done, but he wanted the attitude to be right. He said, I want you to bring me an offering. He said, build a tap now. He said, of everyone that's willing, shall thou receive of the offering. Now, I want you to know, we will, I will receive unwilling offerings. You don't have to be willing. You can be mad. We will spend your mad money. Mad, bitter, whatever. We're going to spend it. We're going to get done what we need to get done. But that doesn't mean you're going to get a harvest of it from it. Okay? So God, it was very important for God to have the hearts involved. He said, if it first be, if it's willing, uh, I think that's also in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 8, further down, he says, it's acceptable according to that which a man hath, not what he doesn't have. And then he says, everyone that is willing, God loves a cheerful giver, no, a willing giver whose heart is in his giving, who has a desire to do it. When they, but God wants to do something for somebody or for some, or something, he does it through somebody or something. Whenever God wants to bless somebody, he uses somebody who's willing to be used. In other words, God works through people. Say that. Say, God works through people. The Lord still has need of people, places, and things to do what he wants to do in the earth. Let's make it, that, that sound real profound, to do what he wants to do in the earth. The Lord still has need of people to do what he wants to do in the right direction. The Lord still has need of people to do what he wants to do in our community. The Lord still has need of people to do what he wants to do in your family. Isaiah 6 and 8, Isaiah records, and I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? God is asking a question, who will go for us? God's asking the question, who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. In old church, we just sing a song, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. If the Lord needs somebody, here am I, oh Lord, send me. I may be motherless, but I'll go. God, God needs somebody who's willing to go. As powerful as he is, as omnipotent as he is, and as, om as omniscient as he is, God still needs people to go for him to do things in the earth. The heavens are the Lord, but the earth is given to the children of men. So things are going to be done in the earth. He needs people in the earth to get it done through him. There's some things, y'all, that God can't do without us. And there's some things we can't do without God. Let me say that again or flip it around. There's some things we can't do without God and there's something that God won't do without us. So Paul puts it this way, we are laborers together with God. Many of us here are saved because somebody witnessed to us. We are saved because somebody preached the gospel. God so loved the world that gave his only begotten son who said, believe in him, so not perish, but have ever, everlasting life. Okay? God sent not his, his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He's, wishing, he's willing that none would perish, but all would come into repentance. That's the heart of God. That's the desire of God. And yet God says, How? So they call upon him whom they have not heard. And how shall they hear without a man, a preacher? If our lives are going to be set on the right path, 
You'll hear a voice behind these saying, when you see your teacher, this is the way walking in it. God needs people. The Lord still has need of us. He has need of people. Paul put it this way, 1 Corinthians 3 and 6. He said, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gives the increase. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gives the increase. A lot of times we're praying for, we're praying for increase, but somebody got to plant. Somebody got to water. God said, if you plant it, if you water it, I'll increase it. My God, my God. If you plant it and somebody else water it, I will increase it. We are co-laborers together with God. We are laborers together with God. When God wanted to save a family from a flood, he needed a man named Noah to build an ark. When God wanted to spare and save the Ninevites, he needed a prophet named Jonah to go preach to him, and Jonah didn't want to do it. One of the reasons why I like the book of Jonah is because it tells you that God will call you to do something you don't necessarily want to do. Everybody all these bougie assignments. The Lord called me to preach in Hawaii. Oh, he did, huh? It, we want bougie assignments. It, and, it, you know, a lot of people want to, the Lord call them to do what you already want to do. But a real calling is when God almost got to convince you. Look at it in the scriptures. Then you know you're hearing God. Told Jonah to go preach to them. He said, no, I don't want to preach to them. Because if I preach, they're going to repent. And they repent, you're going to spare them. I don't want them spared. I want them killed. They're awful people. They've been oppressing your people. They've been victimizing your people. And you want me to preach to them? To preach the good news? They don't need good news. They don't deserve good news. He tries to run away from his assignment. Until the Lord allowed him to be in the belly of a, of a, of a fish. And then he got out that fish. He said, I'll go. I'll go. <laughs> can I tell you, you can go through enough in life. You say, God, if you get me out of this, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll go wherever you want me to go. I ain't going to smoke no more. I ain't going to drink no more. You didn't, you didn't say you ain't going to lie no more, though, but I. When God sent, wanted to send his son, we don't think about it. He needed a virgin named Mary who had to be convinced. I, I don't stand this. I don't stand how this is going to work. How is this going to be since knowing not a man? And then she finally says, be it unto me according to your word. Your will be. And it's at that moment she got pregnant with it had to be with consent. If it's not consent, it's rape. The Holy Spirit didn't rape Mary. She had to consent. Be it unto me according to your word. And she had convinced, he had convinced a good, just man named Joseph to be his earthly father. Everything that God desires to do on the earth requires cooperation from men and women. When God wants to meet the needs of men, he works through other men. We know the scripture, Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall money fall out the sky. Oh, shall men give into your bosom. Let, let, me, let me help y'all for all you people who don't like people. All you people don't need nobody. Long, 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 long as I got King Jesus, don't need no, that ain't true. That's why God looked at, looked at Adam and said, it's not good. I don't know what he was doing. He was trying to do something. God said, oh, this ain't good. This ain't. 
I, the man needs somebody. He needs this. This ain't going to work. Stop it. I'm going to get you a woman. God says it's not good for man to be alone. I'm going to make somebody suitable for him. Those of us who don't like people, God going to bless you through people. God promotes you through people. Yeah, okay. Yeah, God, God, God promoted Joseph, but Pharaoh made the appointment. God promoted Daniel, but King Darius made the appointment. Are, are y'all listening to me? God gives you favor with men. Amen. You can't despise people and ridicule people and cut everybody off. Even when you're upset, you got to understand that there are some, there's certain relationships. It needs to be, it can be a, a, a separation without being a tear. Somebody got mad with me one time who, and he got mad with me and started talking about me. And I had, oh, geez, I, I'm just saying, I bought him a car one time, gave him the down payment on the house. They don't tell you, they don't tell you about all that story. Lost a house, then gave him down payment on another house. They didn't tell him all those stories. And then they're going to tear. See, you, certain people, you need to do an easy separation. Because you never know, especially when God gives you favor with certain people. There's some people I'm in favor with, I ain't trying to mess that up. Now, you can do what you want, you can say what you want. There's some people I have favor, I am, I'm not trying to mess that favor up. I was in a meeting one time with our former mayor and, and, and political officials, and, uh, and, and this preacher called, called a meeting. We got there, and he's and he trying to like, rise up. You don't know me. And trying to, uh, I said, no, no, I, I ain't trying to fight with them. I got too much to do in this city. I'm not trying to make enemies. Come on. The Bible says make friends. No, that, let me stop right there. The Bible says make friends. He, he, he that is going to have friends, you got to show himself friendly. So you first of all, tell him to be friendly. Then it says use your money to use your money to make friends with the mammon of unrighteousness. You need to know how to make friends. Dale Carnegie wrote a book many years ago, how to, how to uh, win friends and, influ inf and influence people. Because when God blesses you, he's going to bless you through people. Pastor Moss was telling me, Today about one of our, one of our uh, members, uh, Queen, who's, who's, at a, who's at this retreat that cost $1,200, $1,500, whatever it was, and met a woman in the supermarket and told her and, 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 and uh, just talked. I said, well, who are you? What do you do? I said, well, I do these things for w women. And well, she said, I just want to I, I just wanna sow this into you. You can come to the retreat, and then we can see how maybe we can work together after that. that that's because she's pleasant. Now, y'all know she was in the supermarket, no offense, being a Karen. No offense to Karen. Not that Karen. Okay. You got to know how to entreat people. Some people just mean unnecessarily. God's going to bless you through people. Giving shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, chained together, and run, run over shall men give into your bosom. Same measure that you meet with all is going to be meant to you. When God wanted to start a nation, he used a man named Abraham. Look at Genesis 17, 4 through 8. God says to, God says to Abraham, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Can I tell you, whatever God has made you, he's already made you. Everybody just don't see who you are yet. Before he's a father of many nations, God said, I've made you a father. You are who God made you to be. I said to Pastor Marcy, just we talking this week, I said, I meet these people telling me I'm a former minister. I'm a former pastor. I'm a former. I said, either you're called or you're not. You might be a backslidden one. 
You may not be walking in your calling, but if God called you, you are who God called you to be. And when you see yourself as who God called you to be, it'll change your behavior. But too many of us, we got these titles that we pick up and put down. I am who God said I am. Our Father, many nations have I made thee, verse 6, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful. I will make nations of thee, and kings going to come out of you. I'm going to establish my covenant between me and you, and your seed after you in their generation for an everlasting covenant. I'm going to be a God unto you, and to your seed after you. I'm going to give unto you, and to your seed after thee. And the land wherein thou art a stranger that was not yours, that you were just surgering through all the land of Canaan, for I'm going to give it to you for an everlasting possession. I will be their God. God said, there's some great things I want to do and it's going to start with you I have this concept that I've been thinking about and I got and, uh, and you know I have uh, 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 for years I've been thinking of name for it. some of you hear me talk about people like me and others who are uh, who what I call I was calling the first generation you know people or, or, or breakthrough generation people you know, you're the first one in your family to get a, uh, an education you're the first one in your family maybe to be married you're the first one to have a, have a lasting marriage. You're the, and come on, how many of us are first? And the, the, what the concept the Lord gave me, what you, what you really are, you're nation builders. You're nation builders. God tells Abraham, I'm going to make nations come out of you. I'm starting something new with you. Everybody else, all your family, as far as you know, up until now, we're worshiping the moon and various gods, but I'm go you're going to have a relationship with the true Jehovah, the Jehovah, the omniscient, the om omnipresent, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the omnipotent God, the only God. You're going to have a relationship with me, and now your seed is going to know me forever. Nation build. Somebody say I'm a nation builder. I'm a I'm a nation builder. God wants to build something new with you because of what you've come from, because of what you've seen, because of what you've been experienced to. God wants to build something new from you. But when, when he wants to do that, it has to start with somebody. Let me remind you of something else. Somebody going to be the first millionaire in your family. Amen. It might as well be you. Somebody going to be the first person in your family to give jobs and create jobs rather than just go apply for jobs. It might as well be you. Somebody going to be the first person in their family to send their child to college debt free. It might as well be you. Somebody going to be the first person uh, in your family to have a lasting marriage of 50 years. Plus, until death do your part, it might as well be you. Somebody shout, I'm a nation builder. When God wanted to preserve a nation, he used a man named Joseph. When God wanted to deliver the children of Israel out of the Egyptian bondage, he used a man named Moses. And that took, that, that sideswiped Moses. He, Moses wasn't prepared for that. Moses had been praying too. Pick it up here in Exodus 3rd chapter verse 7 through 10. And the Lord said to, to Abraham, said, I, I've seen your affliction. Amen. Moses said, thank God. I'm so glad you saw us. I've seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And Moses said, yes, thank you, Lord. He said, I've heard their cry by reason of their task. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my outcry. I know that so. I know you know, Lord. Yes, Lord. He said, I'm come down to deliver them out the hand of the Egyptians. Hey, glory to God. And I'm going to bring them up out of the land unto a good land, unto a large, prosperous land, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Yes, sir. It's about to be on and popping. Coming to the good land, the big land. Glory to God unto the place of the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Amorite, Perizzite, Hittite, Jebusite. See you, tights. All oh, y'all getting up out of here. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the Israel is come unto me. Yes, you already told me you heard me. Thank you, Lord. And I've seen the oppression. Yes, wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, and I'll send thee. You want to send who? 
I want you to do it, Lord. But what's this got to do with me? I know you want to bust the bill of $15 million church, but what's that got to do with me? I know you want to change this community, but what's that got to do with me? I'm just glad you heard. I'm glad you see. But God said, what I hear and what I see, in order for me to get involved, I got to let you see and hear what I see and hear. And I got to get you to feel what I feel. That's what God did with, with the prophet Hosea. Go marry a woman of whoredom. That sounds so much nicer than it is. Go marry a hoe. Marry her. Give her your name. They say you can't make a whole housewife. But I want you to try. Marries her, has children with her. Look like everything's going good. She goes back out in the street. Jesus. Goes back out in the street. And Hosanna, God, I told you this wasn't a good idea. I don't know why you thought I should marry this woman. God said, go back and get her. Forgive her. Bring her back home. What? And then you keep reading the book, and he said, because so the children of Israel have done unto me. I loved you. I made you a people. I gave my life for you. I, 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 I redeemed you. I brought you out the land of Egypt, and I loved on you, and you go right back. And then that's where we get where God says, I'm married to the backslider. In order, for, in, order, in order for Hosea to hear God's heart, he had to experience his pain. Are y'all listening to me? So God tells, God tells uh, Moses, I want you to go down. I've seen the affliction. Verse, go now, I'm going to send thee to Pharaoh that you may bring them, that thou mayest bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Now look at verse 10. I, I want you to go, out, that thou mayest bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. Wait a minute. I, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You said you saw the affliction. You said you heard this song. Verse 8, Lord, go back up to verse 8, God. You said in verse 8, I am come down to deliver them. See, that to you done contradicted your word. Because verse 10, you say, you're going to send me that I can deliver them. But in verse 8, you say, you're going to come down and deliver them. God going to deliver them through you. God needs you. God going to build it through you. God going to do it through you. God going to redeem them through you. Things going to change through you. Look, somebody say, he's going to do it through me. So I want you to understand, that as we, as we get ready to build and as we're giving this super seed, the Lord has need of you. The Lord has need of what he's placed in your hand for such a time as this. The children of Israel, they come out of Egypt. He says, borrow from the Egyptians. Insist. That they give you, and I'm going to give you favor, borrow jewelry, borrow linen, borrow material, borrow all of these things. He said, you're going to leave and you're going to strip the Egyptians of that which belongeth to you. They would not be prosperous if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for, for your patriarch Joseph, who spared them and gave them wisdom how to survive a pandemic. When all the other nations were failing. I'm going to strip them of that which belongs to you. And they left. They stripped the Egyptian gold and silver and jewelry and, and raiment and material and scarlet and this and that. And then they get in the wilderness and God says, build me a tabernacle. And all the things that God told them to build with, he had given it to them when they left Egypt. But some of them didn't have it anymore. Some of them didn't have it because in between the time that God asked for it and he gave it to them, they built a golden calf. God never asked us for what he hasn't given us. God never asked us to do what he hasn't given us the ability to do. God has need of us. Just like Jesus had need in order to make his triumphant entry, he had need of his disciples to cooperate. He needed the owner of the cult and the donkey to, co to cooperate. 
and he needed the disciples to bring it to him. God has need of us. And now as we're approaching, even in this $15 million project and preparing our super great seed, God's calling us to meet the need for his house. God has made promises, y'all, to those who meet the needs of his house. Look at 1 Chronicles 29 and 3. Moreover, a lot of people miss this. This is what David says. He's taking an offering to build the temple that God said you're not to build, but you're supposed to prepare to build it. Moreover, because I set my affection, I really had my heart in this. It was on my heart to, I set my affection to the house of God. I have of my own proper good. While I was trying to prepare for the house of God, God bless me. While I was taking care of his house, he was taking care of my house. While I was trying to make sure his house was able to take advantage of every opportunity, opportunities came my way. It fell in my lap. <laughs> Look at somebody say, it's about to fall in your lap. Oh, that's a prophetic word Pastor Chandler gave it to us about two months ago. There's some stuff, if it hasn't already fallen, it's about to fall in your lap. Glory to God. He said, I set my affection on the house of God. I have of my own. I got my own proper good. I got a lot of my own stuff. I got gold and silver, which I've also given to the house of my God over and above what I prepared for the holy house. He, oh, my goodness. He said, so a great grace kicked in. Great grace kicked in, but I was preparing one amount. Grace kicked in. I was able to do more than I prepared to do. Do y'all see that in there? Book of Haggai, first chapter, three, three through eight. God was telling people, he said, get your priorities right regarding my house. Haggai 1, 3 and 8, 3 through 8. The word of the Lord, by Haggai the prophet saying, the Lord, word of the Lord came by the, then came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai saying, is it time, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? Just before this, God said, y'all think I don't hear what you're saying? Y'all saying it ain't time. This, this just ain't a good time. It's, you know, people don't come to church no more. You don't need all these seats. People ain't coming. You understand what, you understand what I'm saying, Laura? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You, 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 don't, you don't need all this if people ain't come to church. This, this is a pandemic. Everybody streams now. That ain't the case. Ain't y'all sitting here? Sometimes we focus on the wrong things, the wrong people. God always got a remnant. God always got people who are not just going with the crowd. God always got people who, always, who will say, ask for me in my house. Everybody else can do what they want to do, but ask for me in my house. We're going to serve the Lord. This what we're going, that's what, maybe that's what everybody else does, but ask for me in my house. Somebody say me in my house. See, sometimes everybody look at everybody else's house on social media. Focus on your own house. I said, people said, it's not, not a good time. And God said, oh, verse 4, but is it time for you to dwell in your sealed houses? Everybody else build it. Where I live, they used, to, they used to move out here to get away from the crowd. Now we in the crowd. Come out of my house and look like we coming down Harbison Boulevard on Saturday. Just building, building, building. Everybody else building? Have y'all noticed that? Everybody's building. And people told me the church shouldn't be building. What sense does that make? I go to New York City. Buildings, more skyscrapers going up. We were in Charlotte last week, right across from our hotel. Another skyscraper's going up. Everybody's building, but the house of God shouldn't be building. They see increase, we see decrease. They're going forward, but the church will be going backwards. They're expanding, and the kingdom is, in, is, is, is decreasing, is shrinking. The devil is a liar. Glory to God. Is it time for you to build? It's time for you to dwell in your sealed house and this house a lot of ways? He said, God said, let, let, me, let me tell you this. Now therefore, said the Lord, consider your way. He said, you need to think about this. He said, he said you take care of everything else except God said, he said, God, this is what God said. How's that working for you? 
How, how's that working out? Verse 6, he said, you're sowing much, but bringing little. That ain't supposed to be happening. You eat, but you still don't have enough. You drink, but you're not filled with what you drink. You're clothed, but you're not, none warm. Your clothes still cheap. That's what that means. He said, he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put in a bag with holes in it. You got more jobs, got more streams, and less money. I said, how's that working out for you? Now put me first. Thus saith the Lord of all, consider your ways, go to the mountain, and bring wood, build the house. Build the house. The Lord has need of you. The Lord has need of your funds. Build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I'll be glorified, saith the Lord, which tells me something's about to change, which tells me when God has takes pleasure in it, now when you sow much, you're going to bring in much. Glory. And when you eat, you're going to have more than enough. When you drink, you're going to be filled. And now God's going about to give you some good clothes and some quality items because you put my house first. And great grace will be upon you. I'm prophesying in the house the right direction right now. Great grace will be upon you. Don't tell me God's not concerned for his house. When we talk about the tithe, the Malachi 3, 10, 11, he's talking about, God's talking about his house. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat where in my house. Provision for my house. He said, if you do it, people, somebody, somebody years ago, we had, a, we, had a, we had a musician in our church. He, he, he looked like Fred Hammond. We had just started. Really, he, he looked like Fred Hammond. Literally, look like, and, and he played too. He was really a great guy. But his wife, his wife, I could see she had an attitude. Okay. Thank God. At, at this point, most, most of the time, the people with the bad attitude, they don't hang around anymore. But the early days, these folks used to try to, these were people that tried pastor souls. <laughs> see, people used to hang, I never understood that. I didn't understand why you come to a church you don't have to go to with a bad attitude. Just go on. Just go on. Go on. I found, I, I found that word when I came south. I used to think the word was go on. I thought it was two words. I found out when I came down south, one word, go on. It says one word, go on. I never understood that. And uh, she says, and he, he was there, he would lead worship, and, she, and he was really a wonderful guy. And his wife just had a bad attitude. And I asked, I said, what's up with your wife? He said, well, she just don't understand. I said, what's she don't understand? She said, she don't understand. How come every time you preach about finance, you preach about, you preach about finances and God blessing us through giving? I said, because that's what words say. And then we had youth ministry and they had children. She wouldn't send the children to youth. I, and, and, as much, and then I went back to playing. I said, listen, I never want this church to be a source of division in people's houses. I said, if your wife is that unhappy, I suggest you all go and find another church. And he thanked me for releasing him because he was going through hell at the house. I think it's worse anyway. Uh, and so uh, I, I, I released him. But this is what the scripture says. God says, if you do this for my house, watch what I'll do for your house. The reason why I preached about the blessing of giving because it's all through the scripture. It's all, it's all through the scripture. So a lot of people preaching about telling you about giving, but they're not telling you what you got, ex, what you got a right to expect because you give. So God says, take care of my house and watch me, prove me, test me. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Oh, it's been some sprinkling, but it's about to be a pouring. And there shall not be room enough. To receive it. Room, not room enough to receive it means more than enough. Amen. People try to get liberal, right? I got, I don't have that. I got room to receive. That means more than enough. That means your bills paid and now you got some overflow. Amen. Somebody say, I believe for overflow. I, I know what it is to always just be waiting for flow, hoping to have enough. But God bringing you to a season of overflow. There will be more than enough. There will be more than enough. You'll be asking God, do I give this or do I give that? Do you want me to give this and give to that? God, I don't just want me taking advantage of, but I want to give every way you tell me to give. Somebody shout more than enough. Yeah. 
And the blessing I love about the tithe and about giving, he says, I will rebuke the devourer. I will rebuke. The devil try to come your way and say, ah. The devil try to, ah, ah. I, was, I was telling Pastor Moss, I was, I was telling that about my, my, my mother-in-law who's going to be with the Lord, but my mother-in-law was very protective of her daughter. She wanted to protect her from me. She didn't like me. She, I think she eventually learned to love me, but she didn't like me at first. And so, uh, first of all, she told her, when she found out I was a minister, she said, mm-hmm, he just won't get married. You're going to have a whole bunch of babies. She prophesied it. She said, I'm telling you, that's what he's going to do. He won't get married. You're going to have a bunch of babies. Praise the Lord. Amen. It, it was fulfilled. But I would call her. I would go to call Mark. We were going together. I would call her. And I'll say, uh, Ms. Antoine, can I speak to Marcia, please? And she would say, is this Michael? <laughs> she knew it wasn't Michael. It ain't been a Michael since it had been a Herb. <laughs> Michael, was, Michael was the former boyfriend. She knew I was. And, and she said, she ain't here. I said, no, no, I know she's there. Because you, you young people, you don't know about because, But see, because back in the day, we didn't have cell phones, so we made an appointment. We meet every day at the same cafe, 6.30. We made, so I know she was home, because we made an appointment to call. And I'll never forget, I, I said, Miss Antoine, can I please speak to Marcia? I know she's there. She said, Herbie, you don't know who you're messing with. You don't know who you're messing with, Herbie. This is mine. This is mine. That's what God says. He tried to mess with you. The devil trying to mess with you. Ah, devil, you don't know who you're messing with. This is mine. <laughs> this is mine. I, back, I will rebuke the devil. I'm so glad there's some devils I don't even have to fight. My tithe is fighting for me. My giving is fighting for me. God already got a hedge of protection around me in my house. He's rebuking the devourer for my sake. Hallelujah. Because of me, the God is rebuking the devil. Stop worrying about devils. Your tithe is rebuking the devil. He cannot destroy the fruit of your ground. I will re rebuke the devil. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. When my rebuke is broken, the Lord rebukes him. Oh, let me finish this here, y'all. I'll rebuke the devil for your sake. He shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord. God said, I have need of it. If you give me what I have need of, I'll fight your battles for you. Y'all, God has been known to ask people to sacrifice what they need to supply what he needs. He commanded the widow woman of Zarephath to feed Elijah. Then he supplied her need. Now, we already know, if you really see she the woman of Zarephath, she didn't know the whole story. But if she knew the whole story, when he said, give me, he comes to, to, uh, to Zarephath and says, give me a cake first. If she knew the whole story, she said, you should have stayed where you were. <laughs> right? You should have stayed. God had the ravens feeding you. You should have just stayed where you were. She didn't know the story. God sends him after God had ravens feed him. Ravens a bird. Birds don't feed people. People feed birds. Unless some supernatural stuff is happening in your life. <laughs> Somebody say supernatural stuff happens in my life. <laughs> oh my God. Supernatural stuff happens in my life. Supernatural stuff happens. And, the, and the, well, we're not taking it for granted, but, but, we, but it happens so often it should be happening so often that the supernatural become natural for you. Now, you're not taking it for granted, but the supernatural should be natural for supernatural people. The supernatural should be natural for the believer. In other words, it should be so common. Oh, that's, 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 that, 
That's just my God. Won't he do it? You know, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. He says to the woman, give me a cake first. She says, I don't have, but it wasn't that he needed the cake. He needed her to release her faith. He needed her to give what was in her hand so he could pour out what was in his barrel. He needed her to give what was in her hand so he could pour out what was in his barrel. So the word of the Lord came after she went and did what Elijah told her to do by the word of the Lord. Uh, 1 Kings 17 and 14, for thus said the Lord, the battle of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of all fail until the Lord send rain upon the earth. In other words, God's going to supernaturally take care of you until a natural turns around. And she went and did according to the word of it by the same Elijah. And she and he and her house. She was just concerned about her and her house. But she and he and her house. Oh, that sounds like more than enough. That sounds like more than enough. You, God going to put you in a position to take care of your house and somebody else's house. Come on, if you have a desire, God won't put you in a position to take care of your house and somebody else's house. Some of you, you got parents who are getting older and now that you know the word of God and, and you don't know how you're going to do this, but now you know through the teaching that I've given you that children ought to return to their parents. God going to put you in a position that you're going to be able to take care of your parents without stress, without strain, without struggle. And you'll have gold like dust just because you have a desire to be the type of child that God wants you to be. And because you, you have a desire to be the type of husband that God wants you to be because you have a desire to be the type of wife that God wants you to be because you have a desire to be the type of parent that God wants you to be now God will supply because if there first be a willing mind Amen. the battle of me wasted not neither did the cruise of fail according to the word of your life when Jesus needed okay let me wrap this up here Jesus needed a floating pulpit Wait, what you talking about, Pastor? You know I'm going to show it to you, right? Luke 5. See, he's got all his crowds following him. And it came to pass, Luke 5 and 1, as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And as he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him. Pray don't mean our father, no. He means he's, he's beseeching him, he's begging him, he's insisting that he would thrust out a little from, the, from land. He said, can, can I preach on your ship? <laughs> now, when he had left speaking, crowds are waiting to hear the word. Jesus used Peter's boat as a floating pulpit. Are oh, y'all with me here? Now, when he had finished the sermon, he said, I'm about to close now. But just before I close. <laughs> when he had left speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a drought. You gave me something I needed. Now I want to give you something that you desire. Watch this, that you gave up on. Oh, y'all don't hear me here. Y'all don't catch that. God has a way of giving us desires that we gave up on. That's what he did for the Shunammite woman. The Shunammite woman built a room in her house. He said, what can I do for her? She said, I, I'm good. I, and, and the service said, I don't know. She, she needs a child. She said, oh, no, no, not at this point. I don't need a child. God gave her what she gave up on. God gave Abraham and Sarah what they gave up on. Peter said, the night is over. I can catch no fish. We tried. We're giving up. This is over. But God said, your seed, your seed will give you a new beginning. Your seed will let the devil know this ain't over. Woo, Jesus. Launch out to the deep. Let down your nets. For, let down your nets. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answered said, Lord, it's over. Lord, we are torn all night and taking nothing. Then he caught himself, nevertheless, at your word, 
at, at your word, not words, word. I'll let down the net. God said the nets. Come on, look somebody say, get ready for big harvest. Get ready for big harvest. Oh, come on. God, God need to get your nets ready. Not a net. Get your nets ready. Get your nets ready. Get your nets ready. Let down the net. And they, when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. It was so many fish, they called it fishes. <laughs> fishes. And the net break. The only reason why it broke, because they didn't get the nets. Jesus said nets, and he got a net. What God can to do for you is going to be too big for a net. Get your nets out. Big seed, big harvest. Big seed, big harvest. Great seed, great harvest. Overwhelming seed, overwhelming harvest. Let out your nets. And they bacon unto their partners which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they filled, came and filled the ship so that they began to sink. I'm prophesying over somebody in the house of right direction. A net breaking, boat sinking blessing. I'm prophesying over somebody who received it. A net breaking, boat sinking blessing. I'm prophesying over somebody over here. A net breaking, Boat sinking blessing more than enough more than enough if you would give God what he had need of in this season if you would give God what he had need of in this season what you thought was over is going to have a brand new beginning I'm prophesying unto you a net breaking boat sinking anointing a net breaking boat sinking anointing a net breaking boat sinking anointing a net breaking boat sinking blessing a net breaking boat sinking harvest God has need of it 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 a boat breaking boat sinking net breaking blessing we are co-laborers together with him eyes have not seen ears have not heard indeed they have it into the heart of man the things that God has for those that love him. But God's revealed them unto us by his spirit. You ain't seen nothing yet. This is the biggest thing we've ever done, so we'll receive the biggest harvest we've ever received. Great vision, great provision. Hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. See that song moving forward, Israel's song. Glory to the name of Jesus. This is not time to retreat. It's time to keep going. Look, somebody say, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. The devil been trying to tell some of y'all to stop. This ain't no stopping time. Surrender. 
We say, Hosanna means Messiah. But the Jews were crying out, save us. Save us. Deliver us. But we thank you that we know you are the Messiah. You've already saved us. You've already delivered us. No matter what things look like, we are saved. We are delivered. We are secure. You are our forever king. So I declare in the name of Jesus as we prepare to allow you to use us to do great things, to expand the kingdom, to change this community, to build that you tell us to build. Great grace, favor, <laughs> net breaking, boat sinking blessings are coming our way. Right now, you've already prepared. You've already prepared. You've already prepared. You've already prepared. Thank you for those you already talked to. People you're, you're talking to right now. You're getting seed to the sower in the name of Jesus. And thank you. It will be harvest time for your people. In Jesus' name. If you receive that, give God praise. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 